there's a problem with volume automation. It's not that volume automation is the problem, but when you use it, it can cause problems for you, specifically if you use it too early. So what am I talking about? Well, specifically, once you write some volume automation on a track, you are forever locked in to having volume automation on that track. What do I mean? Well, first of all, what is volume automation? It's simply telling the fader to move automatically, right? So on this track here, if we, if I come in and I turn automation on on this channel, let's say touch automation, and I hit play, and I move the fader like this up and down, and I'm making all these awesome movements, making it sound super great. Once that's done, if I press A on the keyboard, it will show me the volume automation on all my channels, okay? I'm going to turn this back to read because I don't want it to write any more automation. But this is what I just did with the fader. It looks wonderful, doesn't it? Now, if I was smarter, I would have turned that on to where you could see the automation happening as I'm doing it. Let's do that a little bit more. Here we go. And as I move things around, yeah, we get all kinds of good. I mean, you could like write your signature that way or something. Wait, no, you really couldn't. But you could do a heartbeat or boom, boom, boom. That's kind of a fun... Look, look, it's the market. It's going up. No, it's crashing. Anyway, um, you can have a lot of fun <laughs> visually with volume automation. But here's the problem. If once I've used volume automation, and you've probably run into this if you've ever tried with volume automation, I get later in the song and I say, all right, here's my vocal. And I'm listening along. Let's open up the mixer too. And I say, all right, it's playing along. And I'm like, you know what? I need to turn this up. So I, I push the fader up. And I'm like, cool, that sounds great. Now watch what happens to the fader when I press stop, when I stop playback. Boink. What the? I hit play again. I say, no, I want you to turn up. So then I say, oh, I'll, I'll push it up and then I'll press play. That'll fix it. All right, 6 dB up. Dang it. What's happening? I've written volume automation on this track. The prop, but what that also means is even though there's no, there's no dots on the screen right here, right? It is clear. But the problem is because there's, if there's one dot of volume automation anywhere on a track, the entire track is now automated. Meaning everything before here and everything after here is set to hold at 0 dB. Meaning I can no longer move the fader without having to write more volume automation. This is why I think volume automation is incredibly helpful. Sometimes mixes feel too static and moving things around, having things build and come down in different sections. It, it's There's plenty of places where volume automation makes sense. I'm not anti-volume automation, although I am admittedly pretty lazy when it comes to actually doing it. But I am warning you not to go for the volume automation too early in the mixing process. If you haven't really gotten all your levels right, as soon as you do this, you are now locked into this forever and it's super annoying. So you might say, well, what if I want to just turn the overall vocal up or down? Well, there's, there's a couple ways you can handle it. So one is you could use what's called clip gain. So let's press A to get out of this view. I could come in and I could either just use event gain, right, where I just take this section and I move it in whole chunks, so it's only good for moving entire sections. I can right click on this track and I can check the box for gain envelope. This gives me essentially an automation mode for the actual audio file itself. So this is actually happening on the audio level before it ever goes through the mixer. So I could maybe make some points here and I could do, you know, that looks a lot like automation. I can't do this with a fader, first of all. Um, and it is destructive in the sense that it's happening on the audio side before it ever hits the console. So that's all well and good. This is, and it has all the same tools, right? We can make things have a curve to them. We can get pretty granular with this. This is clip gain. Um, not the best alternative because it's, this is really annoying, right? To, to try to write an entire, to imagine writing this kind of crazy automation with your mouse clicking all the time. Not super fun. Uh, so what other, what other options do we have available to us? Well, one option which is a, a slightly more elegant, slightly less clumsy option, is let's say you, at the end of your vocal chain, for example, we've got a bunch of plugins here, we could add Mix Tool. Mix Tool does a couple of things. It's just a kind of a utility tool. But we open it up, and one of the things Mix Tool gives us is a big old volume knob. We can go up or down by 20 decibels. So one of the things we could do, we can right-click this and say, Edit Automation for this gain. And now we've got an automation lane that is tied to that Mix Tool plugin. So if we leave Mix Tool open, and let's say we come in here and we say, 
I want it to turn down here and up here. You'll notice the waveform isn't changing anymore because this is happening at the plugin level, not at the actual audio file level. It's actually happening at the end of our chain here. So just before it goes to the sends, I believe, and down to the fader. But check out what happens when we hit play on this. I hit play. And you'll see Mix Tool is now adjusting itself up and down. So we could have volume automation here, which is independent of the fader. So if this fader didn't have any volume automation on it, we could still move the fader back and forth, and our automation, quote unquote, is still there. The one downside of this is you can't really write this automation with a fader like you can um, on just the actual fader itself. If I want to just move the fader up and down when I'm doing volume automation, this becomes a it's similar right you can click and drag that you could technically depending on if you have a like a fader port you could assign this to a fader but generally speaking you're going up and down here versus just clicking and dragging a fader which the fader has different resolution than this knob right this i move it an inch on my screen it's gone up 24 decibels so there's not a lot of resolution there whereas if i'm right here on the fader I can move this an inch on my screen and it's maybe six decibels. So there's more resolution here. So the fader is generally better for doing volume automation. So while this can work in a pinch, if you need to get some volume changes without, you know, holding your fader hostage, this is an option. But the ultimate option in my book is something you've probably already guessed. If you haven't, you're going to love this, is to create a VCA for this fader. What is a VCA? VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. Doesn't matter. What you do, it's a remote control. It's a, it's a fader that remotely controls other faders. So check this out. I can come to this vocal and I can right click it and I can say add a VCA for selected channels. That gives you a hint that you could do this across multiple. You could have one fader controlling multiple faders, which is cool. But now I've got this fader. So when I move this one, this one moves. So what does that mean? Go. Let's go back to our example of I've got, uh, we're down here later in the song, and I want to hit play, and I move this volume, and when I, see, it won't, it won't move. A oh, playback's actually happening. See, I move it, and it goes back. So what are my, what are my options? It is locked there. <laughs> Literally, it will not stay. When I move it here, what happens? So this is just a remote control controlling the other one. If I do this, what happens? <gasps> you see that? The fader is now following this. But what about the automation that I wrote? What about all that volume automation, the crazy stuff that I wrote? Let's look at it. I've got to change the view here. We're looking at the gain automation for that mix tool that we did. Let's come back to the volume automation. Okay, here it is. Check this out. I'm going to hit play. The fader's moving. It's following the automation, but check this out. I'm now raising and lowering the overall level. This is like a trim automation feature. So the moves are still the same, but I'm adjusting kind of where, where they're all starting. So it's kind of like I'm taking all of these and moving them up and down. The VCA fader allows you to do that. Now, one of the questions you may have is, okay, but what about just using a bus? I could route this vocal into a vocal bus and now use that volume to kind of overall adjust the trim volume. It's almost the exact same thing in this application. If I were to take all of this and add it to a bus, the bus and the VCA are doing similar things in that they're both controlling the overall volume of this. The VCA is actually literally moving the fader. The bus, you're actually routing the audio through said bus. Um, for a lot of, I think the VCA just makes things a lot simpler. There's no putting plugins on VCAs. There's no, it's just, it's red, which is handy to just find it in the session, but it's just a remote control. And you can apply this to multiple faders or multiple buses. For example, if you've got a bunch of like the way I would mix is I've got a vocals bus, a guitars bus, a keys bus, and maybe I want drums and bass have their own VCA perhaps. And then the keys bus and all the other instruments have their own VCA, and maybe vocals has their own VCA. And so I can automate the instruments to kind of all, maybe the drums and bass stay the same, but the instruments all get a little bit louder at the chorus and then come back down. I could automate this fader, and that will in turn, the automation that this is moving will move everything else. You can actually see the automation moving on the screen there. Check that out. So I can visually see what my VCA is do, doing relative to where I originally wrote the automation. Now you may say, Joe, there's too many options. You've made it confusing. I apologize. I probably have. Th this is the beauty of a fully fledged professional audio workstation like Studio One or really any DAW. They typically give you multiple ways to do something because one will eventually make more sense for you than another given the specifics of your situation. In this instance, if I don't need any plugins on the bus, I just want to control volume, VCA probably makes sense. 
and the fact that it gives me some extra flexibility of controlling mult more than just one fader without having to mess with my routing. That's kind of interesting. However, if I want to put some plugins on the bus and then automate the bus, well, in that case, I'd probably stick with a bus rather than a VCA. But as great tools usually give you options, and of course, Studio One gives us a bunch of options. Hope that was helpful for you. Uh, pick one, go mess around with it. Play with VCAs. You'll find, I don't use them in every mix, but I'd say one in 10 mixes, I find a use for that where it comes in and it is the, the, it's like the mix saver because I didn't have to go redo all my routing. I can just grab a VCA and let it control a few faders and all things being equal, it's a very quick solution to some of the problems you face, usually towards the end of your mixes. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.